You guys, just after we recorded this interview, this guest went on to become a world champion. He's the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation Nogi World Champion. And we had the opportunity to have him on our show. You're going to hear from Isaac Greeley right after this on the Manlyhood Mancast. Are you ready to live life to the full? Are you ready to rise up and live a life of honor? Are you ready to boldly step into a life of courage? This is the Manlyhood Mancast. And here's your host, Josh Atcher. Gentlemen, welcome to the Manlyhood Man Cast. I am glad that you chose to listen to this podcast today. I truly believe that the work that we're doing at Manlyhood is making a difference in men's lives. Why do I believe that? Because you guys are telling me that. In our Facebook group, the Manlyhood Man Cave, it's a private group for men only, and I'm hearing and seeing stories of men's lives being transformed because they're taking the things they're learning in the podcast and in life and just in conversation, and they're talking about them, and they're growing, and they're learning, and they're getting better. They're becoming better men. I'm becoming a better man because of what's happening here, because of the conversations that we're having. And I'm excited about that. So if you want to be a better man, this is how you can do it. Make sure that you get plugged in to our private Facebook group. And if you believe in the mission of Manlyhood, please, you can help support it by going to our Manlyhood store. And you can buy some of our apparel, our t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, things like that. And you can also pick up some of our books that we've got available for men. We've got more resources for men coming soon, including a Patreon that we're working on where you can subscribe and get bonus and exclusive content, as well as some really cool offline extra content that you'll only be able to get through the Patreon. So that'll be coming soon. So don't go far and you'll hear about that soon. But today we're going to hear from Isaac Greeley, the official International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation No-Gi World Champion. Isaac, I'm really glad, really glad to have you on the show, man. We've, um, you know, I've known you for a long time. We used to ride the school bus together and, uh, it's 40, <laughs> 45, man, 45. It's been pretty cool to watch. Um, actually kind of like a lot of the kids from bus 45 have now gone on to do some pretty exciting things, which is kind of an interesting <laughs> little paradigm, I think. Yeah, that's an interesting 45 minute, 45, uh, minute ride home too was about what it was but um we had a lot of time to uh you know hang out and talk and create great friendships as kids and it was a very special bus you're right about that definitely definitely so um i i'm really intrigued with the work that you're doing you know obviously you had a successful career throughout high school and college as a wrestler and that has kind of transitioned into you coaching uh, wrestling, MMA, jiu-jitsu. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the work that you're doing, if you could? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been really blessed. Um, I moved down to the Pittsburgh area um, about 20 years ago, like 2002, and uh, I started working here as a chiropractor. Um, I had a good friend that was a, a former uh, uh, teammate of mine at Pitt Johnstown, where I wrestled, who was coaching at uh, – at Lower Burrow, Burrow High School. And uh, he asked me to be his name was Chris Como. Um, and we had a good run as as coaches. And we actually still are on the staff here at Burrow. So that's kind of where I got started with the wrestling uh, coaching thing. And then uh, about 2010, 2009, 2010, we decided to uh, kind of back off a little bit. And we started up a wrestling club. Um, in the meantime, and that kind of blossomed into MMA and jiu-jitsu and fellowship and um, just a lot of positive things. And it's kind of like my uh, everyone that knows that comes here. It's kind of like my my passion and it's something I'm, I'm very um, uh, excited every day I'm here. And uh, it's just uh, it's been a blessing to me to find my way as a man and, uh, you know, have a great people around me, have a great, great uh, support structure in place. Uh, and it's just, it's just, uh, been a lot of fun. I, I truly got lucky to end up where I did. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, the work that you're doing, the place is called the Matt Factory. That's right. Yep. Matt Factory is our club. It's right in Lower Borough. I'm sitting in, in the, my, I have an office here, a chiropractic office as well. Um, and the, and the gym is right next door. So, uh, I work in this office. I can just get done with work, take my work shoes off, put my wrestling shoes on and head next door. And that's, you know, that's what I love to do. So well, it works pre- out pretty convenient too. You know, you get them all twisted up and then you can come and align them and get them straightened out too, you know? Yeah. Well, so, yeah, it's, 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 some people question our, uh, our tactics, but, uh, I have a few people that on, uh, you know, we have on payroll next door that send a lot of patients over here. So no. <laughs> It has been a really cool thing because uh, I talk about this sometimes in, in um, some leadership groups. Um, you know, I made my my passion kind of infused into my livelihood. And I, I, I love chiropractic as well. So it's cool because I love helping people, to, you know, working with people through things. And uh, um, so it's kind of worked hand in hand. And, and I get to work a lot with athletes, which I love. So I get to see athletes of you know, all different age levels, skill levels, different types of injuries, you know, and I have, a, it's just, it's just awesome because helping them through that is I've been through some major injuries in my life. And that's one of the reasons why I became a chiropractor is because I chiropractic helped me through those injuries, those sports injuries. Um, uh, and it really got me to believe in the process behind that. So it's really cool for me to be able to show um, a lot of our athletes like, Hey, you know, pain medication might not be the best thing, you know, um, surgery might not be the best thing for this situation or even doing nothing might not be the best thing. There's things that we can be proactive. Um, and I've actually learned, you know, I'm 45 years old. I still compete, uh, in myself and, um, I consider myself, you know, probably at the top of my game right now at 45, um, which is crazy. I never would have thought that even, you know, when I started doing this 20 years ago. So, I've been lucky to use my profession to kind of fuel my, my career and kind of my longevity as a competitor. That's awesome. So with you still competing today, do you, uh, is it mostly jujitsu that you're competing with or other? Yeah. Other I mean, as well? I mean, I just like, to, mainly I'm a coach number one, first and foremost, but, uh, I like the, my philosophy is, you know, lead from the front. You know, I'm not going to tell my athletes to do anything that I wouldn't do. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that it says a lot when your coach is stepping on the mat with your, with your, with your teammates and your competitors and your, and your wrestlers and your grapplers fighters. So that's just my personal philosophy. Um, and, uh, you know, I like to stay sharp with that because it helps me as a coach as well. I'm a hands-on coach. Uh, I like to feel when people improvements or where they're lacking uh with technically so that i can help them you know get better there so that's kind of ties into my philosophy as well um and it just it just makes it a lot of fun i honestly i love it i have a lot of fun i love going to tournaments with my, with our teammates you know competing side by side with them is just a bet a one for me i love it i always think about the this idea of wrestling is kind of a metaphor for life and i think you probably can relate to that as well do you think you think uh, there's a lot of life lessons learned on the mat? Pretty much all my life lessons have been learned on the mat. Uh, I think it just accelerates a lot. I got really lucky uh, when I was in college. You know, when I went to Pitt Johnstown, I had a great upbringing, had great coaches. Jo- coach Kreiner, you know, Coach Kreiner was my, was my coach. Um, he led me in a lot of directions. And the one thing that he taught me that sticks with me to this day that I preached to a lot of my kids, kids is you know use wrestling as a vehicle in your life it's it's a great vehicle to steer you in the direction that you want to go so having that understanding as a young person teenager um it kind of like he really opened my eyes like hey i want to maybe become a doctor uh how do i do that you know my grades are they good enough to become a doctor i don't know can wrestling help me? Of course it can. So when I got to college, it helped me get into a college into a biology program. Um, I didn't have real high SAT scores. I didn't stand out, uh, academically on that level. Um, and when I got to, when I got there, I got a little overwhelmed. I'm like, man, this is hard. Chemistry is hard. Biology is hard. Physics is hard, but the wrestling kept me very dedicated, very focused, very disciplined. Um, you know, we had study groups uh every night when i was in college at the library for two three hours and without that there's no way i could have graduated you know with a biology degree so i was blessed 
to have that structure in place without wrestling. I don't know if I could have made it through that, to be honest with you. And then when I got to chiropractic school, you know, um, same thing that wrestling my mindset kicked in. Uh, I was, you know, I had that competitive mindset, the competitive drive. I already had a lot of discipline and things set into place, which made things really easy at that point, honestly, uh, because I was, I was doing what I love to do anyway. Um, so it just, you know, it was really beneficial having that wrestling background, um, that wrestling mindset built into, to my life really. And I still, I still use it today. I, it's a cheat code for me, really, honestly, in a lot of avenues. A cheat code. I like that. I think a lot about like that idea that, you know, you've got to, it, it reinforces in your mind that, okay, this is hard. That doesn't mean I give up. It means I push through. It means, okay, so this guy's got me in a, an arm bar. How do I get out of this? You know? And I think, you know, you re- replace that with, okay, so this bill company is hounding me or this, you know, problem is happening in my life. How do we get out of this situation and, and turn it around? You know, I, I love that idea that it's, it's more than about just, you know, sweating on a mat, you know? Yeah. It's constant problem solving. You nailed it. Uh, you know, making good decisions, good decision making. That's something that we stress, um, make good decisions under pressure is a whole nother level of, of development. So, um, I think that that wrestling and grappling and any, any kind of combat sport really, um, can help you with that. Cause you get really in a lot of tough spots, right. And working through them is very challenging. So, you know, we like to use that in our, you know, our, the doctors I work with, um, are wrestlers as well. So we, we get, when we, we actually enjoy getting tough situations thrown at us. Um, like even like just for instance, COVID like really throw a, a, a big hard curveball as at us as physicians and as business owners. Um, you know, we're trying to make sure our employees that we don't lose anybody that we can pay everyone that our patients are still getting quality care. Um, that were following guidelines and mandates. So we actually enjoyed the process looking back on it because we really came together as, as with a wrestling mindset. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, having that mindset together, you know, we really fueled each other. And it was just, it was just nice to see like, hey, we handled that in stride and we got stronger because of it. It was all positive. So learning to keep that positive mentality as well is very important through, through processes like that. Yeah, definitely. So you are coaching, obviously, adults all the way down into high school, junior high. What, what age group do you coach? Uh, we co- so the gym here, um, we coach all the way from five-year-olds up to professional-level UFC fighters. So I personally coach high school still, high school wrestling at Burrow here. Um, we've had a lot of success, and we've got a good, good streak going here in the WPIL. Um, and I coach, I'm the head, one of the head jujitsu coaches here at the math factory and I coach wrestling here at the math factory as well. So mainly high school, college kids is where my niche is. And in, in, in some of the fighters, I, I train, uh, a lot of our uh, higher, uh, up echelon fighters that are more professional level. Um, and we have coaches set in place and all, all the way through from, uh, little, little tykes all the way through middle school, um, through adults, like I said, so it's a crazy situation because the diversity that we have is amazing because we could be teaching a first year, five, six year old wrestler. And then we got a UFC fighter right next to him in a belt. Then we got a hobbyist mother of five, whatever, and a 60 year old businessman training. So it's crazy. The diversity, it's really wild. And the people that we get to meet and uh, interact with is really cool. Um, but I enjoy all aspects of coaching. I enjoy it from the little kids all the way up through. It's just in my blood. Um, it's always been there and I think it'll always be there. So it's just something that, that makes me. Do you find yourself, um, obviously, I mean, the core of this is grappling and, and wrestling and fighting, but do you find yourself doing mentorship and coaching with them on a personal level as well in this process? I mean, I mean, that's part of it. To be a good coach, you have to be a good mentor. So, um, you know, we have, we have different things in place for our athletes that I think, cause every athlete's going to run into different situations in their life. They're going to be challenging. So we have Bible studies that are set in place. Um, we have one that one of our college athletes runs for our, our high school and college kids. 
on Tuesday nights here at the Math Factory. Um, he does an amazing, amazing job. Great kid. Uh, wrestles. He's a uh, senior at UPJ. His name's Brock Biddle. Um, he does just a great job with that. And then I actually host one here on Wednesday mornings for our adult athletes. So we have that for a lot of our fighters and uh, professional grapplers take part in that. And that was actually started a few years ago um, by a really good friend of mine by the name of Brian Cook, who runs the uh, Pittsburgh, Greater Pittsburgh, Allegheny County, Westmoreland County, FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which is pretty amazing because that's kind of where my faith started um and when i was in college my roommate myself and another teammate started our fda chapter at pitt johnstown um and it's still it's strong today there's i think around 70 athletes that, that take part in that um on a yearly basis so it's great to see that that's blossomed but those athletes now come in here and we've used that as well so Brian and I and another friend by the name of John Mulgrave started a, a fellowship youth group or a fellowship uh, FCA meeting um, Bible study about years ago. And it's grown and we've had many people take part of it. We've had CEO businessmen. We've had kids just getting out of jail. We've had kids figure out who they are. We've had people just having a rough time. We've had people having, that have everything going for them. So the diversity of that as well is amazing just to hear the conversations and the trust uh, between the men, you know, with the, with the issues that they have is super powerful. And it's kind of like another, you know, secret sauce that we have here. I think to get those bonds, uh, those man, those manlyhood bonds with each other. Like it's okay. If you're struggling, let's talk about it. Let's work through it. You know, let's, let's see what, what the word of God has in store for us today and how, how, how we can use it. Um, it's crazy because a lot of times our, we start, we start, uh, a Bible study and, uh, it just seems like the Bible study is speaking right directly to you. Um, I have guys say that all the time, like, man, that was like, we, did you plan that for me? It's like, no, that's, that's God talking to us today. He's like, man, that's hit yeah. home. So, so powerful. So to see those moments is really cool. Um, but I just, uh, you know, I'm just really, really proud that we've, that we've incorporated that level of mentorship with our guys because everyone needs it. Every man needs that in their life, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I would agree with you 100%. You know, I, um, with the work that we're doing at Manlyhood, I always tell people, you know, this isn't a Christian website, but I'm a Christian. So we're going to talk about it. And, um, you know, and I, there's guys that are atheists and Buddhists and Muslims and everything else that might not even agree with some of that stuff. And, you know, I believe it, it's changed my life, you know, and we'll talk about it. And it's actually opened up the doors for some really cool conversations to be able to talk about, you know, Hey, look, this is what it actually says, not what you heard somebody say it says, <laughs> you know, and, um, and that's not, like I said, it's not the core of, of what I'm doing, but it's at the, it's at my heart. So it's kind of, all the way through it, you know, and, you know, I know that, that I think that it makes, um, it, it gives you a standard to go by, you know, when you're looking at life. Okay. So what is the right thing to do? Where does, where do you come up with who defines that? And I think it helps, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. So my college wrestling coach, Pat Pecora, who is one of the most influential humans in my life ever, um, you know, he really taught us like clean living. You know, you gotta be a clean, if, you, if you're gonna, if you want to succeed in anything, like one of the biggest keys is clean living. Like you gotta live clean. You gotta eat clean, sleep clean, you know, do the right things, you know, uh, you know, study the word. And, and when you do that, when you live, like when you live clean, um, you know, really powerful things happen. Um, and you really help other people. And that's one of the most powerful things really is be able to see that change in someone. Um, so you know, everyone's going to be throwing curveballs in life and it's hard. You question things a lot. It's, it's okay. But, you know, just having that uh, the guy next to you that's struggling and to see like, Hey man, he's really struggling through this and help him out and see him come to the other side of it and see him help someone else going through something. I mean, it's just amazing to see that, that God's working in, in, in light like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. That's a, uh an important part of what you're doing there, man. I think that that gives a lot of strength and credibility to it even more than, <laughs> you know, I mean, it has another whole dimension to it all. So, so, uh, you've wrestled since, I mean, gosh, you were probably elementary school when you first started doing that. What would you say in all those years 
between wrestling and MMA and jujitsu, what do you think is probably been the toughest fight that you've ever had? Toughest match or toughest situation? Sure. Or, or maybe uh, both. <laughs> well, so I'm in a group called uh, another group that's uh, called Success Through Failure, Reveal Your Path, uh, run by a guy named Wrestler that I wrestled when I was little, actually, by the name of Jim Harshaw. He's an amazing mentor of mine. Um, but when you reveal your path, like we we do success through failure is like one of the one of the codes. Um, so failure, you know, and it, it can sometimes spring load a lot of uh, positive things, a lot of success. So I, one of the most challenging situations I've ever personally been through was uh, my senior year um, of college. I was really wrestling well. I would spent a summer at the Olympic training center training. Um, I had taken second in the country the year before I lost an overtime, uh, match. I was real close and, uh, you know, I had my sights set on being a national champion and that's kind of all I thought about. I was, you know, a little OCD about it. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I decided I'm not leaving any stones unturned and, uh, I wrestled the returning national champion at the weight class above. Cause I moved up a weight, um, in a dual meet at home. And I, I won the match pretty convincingly, but I had injured my shoulder and I felt something kind of twinge in my shoulder when I was wrestling. Uh, and then a few days later, I developed some numbness. And a couple of weeks later, I, I lost a muscle in my shoulder, my, my shoulder blade, and I had gotten some tests done. And I found that I had tore my suprascapular nerve, which is a nerve that runs off your brachial plexus into your shoulder, feeds your rotator cuff. So basically external rotation was gone. You know, abduction was pretty much limited. So I had a really, I had a really, really uh, face-to-face talk with God. That was probably the one time in my life where I was like, I had no control um, over what I could do. So it was my senior year. I'd, I'd stuck around for an extra year to wrestle. I'd already, you know, had all my re- prereqs done, but I did it for, for our team to try to win a national championship. And uh, it was really hard. I just had to teach myself to, you know, am I going to do this or not going to do this? And the doctors were saying, don't do it. There's no reason to do it. You know, nothing to prove. This is too dangerous. Like you can't use your arm. Um, and, uh, I remember, you know, like thinking like, this isn't about me, this is about my teammates. So I, my, my focus really shifted from individual to team. And I used that cause I had a really strong bond with my teammates. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm, gonna, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for them and I'm going to figure this out. So with a lot of ter- determination, um, I learned how to kind of keep my elbow in and wrestle differently than I was used to. Um, but I ended up finishing third in the country. Um, I lost in the semifinals in an overtime match. Um, but I came back and took third and, you know, I was really heartbroken in one regard because I wanted to be a champion, obviously. Um, but losing that match and coming back and taking third and then my roommate who was a four-time all-american and one of the main one of the most powerful mentors in my faith troy barbush who helped lead me lead me that way when we were in college um he won the match in the national finals and we ended up winning the tournament by a couple points over our rivals nebraska omaha but that moment was so powerful for me it was like a sense of pride for our team and what I'd been through and the adversity and how I overcame it helped our team and my teammates rallying behind me and uh, me rallying behind them. Um, and I, I was just one story in the cog in the wheel. So I was one cog in the wheel, but we all had those, those similar situations. We all had similar adversity, but we ended up winning the national championship and it really propelled me in my life. Like, man, if you really put your mind to something, you can make it happen. Um, and I've seen this replayed over and over now as a coach, as a competitor, you know, just as a, as a bystander watching guys like Spencer Lee win national championships with torn ACLs this year. And um, just to, to see the, what the human mind can do and just to, to have it prove to me like mentally, like, wow, if you really put your mind to something, the mind is a super powerful thing and every, you know, failure might not exactly see, be what it means at the time. Might, there might be a, God might have a big picture for you. Um, and it might not be the end of the world. You know, sometimes we lose matches or you have injuries. We think it's the end of the world. It's the worst thing, but really trying to teach that too, in our style of coaching, there's a big picture behind everything has really helped us. I think, 
Um, it's helped us with kids that have been injured or had really tough losses and, you know, just helping them become men at an early thing. And I think that that's the one thing about wrestling that really helped me. I went into college as an 18 year old kid. And I mean, kid, I was a child. I had a lot of grown up to do. When I graduated as a 22 year old, I really feel like I was a man at that point that I could handle a lot of things in my life. Um, with the help from my teammates, my parents and my coaches, I think that that four or five years of my life was super beneficial for everything else that's happened after. Was there a moment for you in that process where you're like, I'm a man today? Or do you think it was looking back, you see, I became a man in that time frame? No, I, I had a very surreal moment with one of my teammates who's still my, my best friend, Tony Clark, who you might remember from Oswego Valley. Um, him and I, were re we usually warm up together. We were really close teammates and he was an American that year. And uh, we were warming up for our last matches of our career. And we were sitting on the bleachers, actually. And we were beat up. We, you know, had black eyes. And um, I got a black eye yesterday. And uh, we're, you know, we're just, we can't move. We're sore. And it's our fifth, sixth match of the tournament. And Tony looks over at me and he said, do you want to warm up? Because we always warmed up the whole, the whole, our whole careers. And I just looked at him and said, I don't think so this time. I think we're just going to walk on the mat and do it. So we walked on the mat. We both won our matches and we went to the showers. And I, I remember like putting, like we're taking our shoes off for the last time. And, you know, I just looked at him and said, man, we grew up. This is, this is it. Like we we're ready for life. Like I remember that moment, very surreal. Like just having that hug with him and uh, you know, man, we, we made it. it was almost, you know, I can, I kind of can relate to, to uh, you know, guys that are in the service and they go through war together and they develop those bonds like this that, that never end. Um, and it's not not nearly on that level, but I had a taste of that and uh, with someone super very close to me that I knew my whole life. So yeah, when you people ask like, do you, do you remember that moment? I'd say that was the moment, you know, that I realized like, life's gonna be complex, it's gonna be hard, but I'm ready to handle it. And uh, I have people around me that are gonna help me handle it as well. So that's that's a very important thing to have. Yeah, I definitely agree that that brotherhood, that people around you, man, I tell you, man, there's been so many times in my life where I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't have been through it if I didn't have people in my corner, you know, cheering me on saying, hey, man, like, go in harder, do this, do that. You know, that brotherhood and that mentorship is it's everything. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent, Josh. It is. So. uh I love to ask this question and I think it might be a good transition as we talk about that moment when you became a man, but I love to ask this question of all my guests. So let's say we're sitting here, we're talking and little Isaac walks in the room and uh, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, some kind of sci-fi mind bending stuff would have to happen, but let's just assume that that's taken care of. Little Isaac walks in the room and you have the opportunity to speak into his life. What do you want to tell him? Well, I tell him, First, uh, I, I wore Coke bottle glasses when I was a little kid. So I tell them at some point there's going to be a thing called contact lenses. So you don't have to wear those Coke bottle glasses anymore. So I remember glasses that were usually broken with the tape on them and all that growing up. So, uh, no, I think the main thing is like, um, you know, I, I remember having like so much want to do something in my life. I remember feeling it from a young age. Like I really wanted to be successful in something and, uh, you know, finding that success may be different than what I, what I envisioned. Um, but I think happiness is the key, you know, making sure that I'm following my heart. You know, I tell them that like, follow your heart, like what you really want to do, you know, you live one life and you hear that, that said, you know, people say that, but you live one life and you get to surround yourself, you know, with the people in your, in your circle that are really going to help you in that, in that life. So, um, I would just tell them to be patient to, you know, live day by day, because I remember like always saying, I wish I was just a, when I was in high school, I can't wait for this. And when I was in college, I can't wait for this. And I can't wait to have a job and I have a wife and I have, I can I may actually make money. And da, da, da. I remember, I think, you know, I'd love to go back and live day by day more. Um, I think that's an important lesson that, uh, you know, I, I, I try to tell kids like, enjoy the process. You know, it's not about the ending. It's, it's about the process. It's about the day to day, about the relationships you make. Um, and I'd say that that's the greatest thing that I've had is so many great relationships with so many great people, um, that 
I would look back and say, you know, really cherish the special people in your life and, and make your circle tight. Good advice. And then my last question that I love to ask, ask everybody, and that's this. So, so we've got all kinds of guys that are listening to this today. What is your best advice for them? Don't do it alone. Like you said, Josh, like having people in your corner, having the right people in your corner. Um, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, of investing back into yourself. Um, you know, if you hear people say 10%, like invest 10% back into yourself or 15% back into yourself. Um, I, I totally agree with that. I think you should invest back into yourself. I think being in investing in any way that you can to better yourself, um, is a huge thing. Uh, you know, I think, uh, mentor groups are great. And, uh, and a lot of men are a little too proud. Like I don't need to have hear advice from someone else. And I think, I just think that that's the ego. And I think getting past the ego is, an, is a very powerful thing um, because you're going to need help in life. You're going to need help no matter what. And uh, being in a strong uh, mentor group really can help you in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, I think Bible studies are great. Um, obviously, um, you know, this conversation with your pastor can be very powerful um, with your coaches. Having a coach is awesome. You know, any, any aspect of life. So, um, I have my coaches, you know, I'm definitely not too proud to say I don't have coaches to help me. I do. Um, people I talk to on a weekly basis about just life in general and things I'm struggling with. Um, but yeah, I think that I probably would have started earlier with investing into myself and, and being around people that are successful, like-minded, um, you know, things like that. there's so much to learn. There's so many books to read. There's so much information out there that can help you um, as a man um, and having other people have their experiences and what they've learned and how they live their life and having perspective on that is awesome. So I think that you, you know, in, 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 in what, 80, 80 years, if you can com can compound that with other people's experiences and lessons they've learned. Um, Cause let's face it. That's what we want to do is learn lessons from other people um and take it and use it in your life it's super beneficial and i think that's one thing that i think man, being a man would really help every man out there definitely the case i uh, interviewed a guy recently and we talked about the power of a mastermind you know where you've got a group of people that can hold each other accountable that can say hey uh how do we how do we deal with this and they can also then say hey here's where i had success maybe you can have success or here's where i've had failure you know and uh and that's definitely made a big difference in my life. It sounds like it has in yours as well. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the mastermind. Big fan. It works. Awesome. So if we've got some guys that are interested in the work that you're doing, you know, I mean, we have people from all over the world that listen, but you know, maybe there's some that are local that are looking for a coach or maybe they just want to follow what you're doing. What's the best way for them to kind of see the work that you're doing? Uh, so, so probably the, one of the most powerful things that we do is uh, our wrestling camp that we hold back in Port Allegheny that we've been doing now for since 1996, but we've had it for the last 17, 18 years um, in as a nonprofit in the name of Bruno Irofito, who was a Ridgeway wrestler that wrestled at Pitt Johnstown that was tragically killed his senior year of college in a car accident um, that used to help out with our camps, but we've made it into, into a scholarship camp um, in his, in his uh, memory. And it's really awesome, really powerful. It's the third week of June every year. Um, and we have a nonprofit under Team Bruno Irofito Wrestling Camp. And, uh, you know, that's one area. We have a Facebook page and we have an Instagram page for that. Uh, and uh, just to follow that and the, the powerful stuff that we have on that and all the people that are, that are part of that, Sean Lathrop and I, um started the, started it a long time ago and we've had great people like aaron rendos brandon newell shane valco tommy costa the, the list goes on and on with people that have poured their heart and soul into it um and we have we have a board of guys that are just great men um scott laney is, is really a big part of it jeff jeff falaroni as well and jason delp but uh just having those men help with with what we do with many 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 other people has been probably the pride of what my life, what I, what I like to do. So, um, that's the big thing. Um, but yeah, we're here in Western Pennsylvania. If anyone's looking to change their life through jujitsu, um, we have fundamental classes that we start with 
I've seen guys walk in here um, and become world champions at 60 years old, which is very inspiring to say the least. Um, we've had, you know, women come in here and be empowered by being able to, you know, have confidence in themselves, um, just change their life uh, through, through the, through the sport. It's a great sport. So I highly recommend anyone that's interested to find a gym near them. Um, and I can always help with that. But our gym's here in Lower Borough, Pennsylvania. It's called the Mat Factory. And uh, we're for all ages, all walks of life. Um, and uh, my business is the Rehab Center. Uh, I have two partners, Jason Jacobs and uh, Ralph Petrarca. And we have a bunch of doctors that are awesome that work for our company. And we have uh, seven offices between Pittsburgh all the way up to Brookville and Clarion. So um, I have a, I'm in my office in Lower Borough right now. So that's that. So if you ever need any chiropractic work, um, that's that's another thing that we do so that's about all i do that's my uh how i've wrapped my life around my passions and 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 things will come a long way since trout brook road um yeah. along <laughs> with now dad Cade and all those great rawlette people that we grew up with um but no place like home the people from back back home where we grew up josh are special um i love this bring all my uh friends and and uh you know uh teammates and every all the kids that i coach up there we bring about 100 kids up usually uh and they love it they love being up there they, they can't believe that i grew up there how awesome it is and the people treat them so well the town's amazing um between Port Allegheny, Rowlett, Cowder Sport, the local towns are just amazing. And, uh, you know, that's one thing that I always have is loyalty and pride from where I came from um, because of how pure the people are there. You know, that's one yeah. thing that I've, I've learned is the purity of the people that are from that area is just, it's just one of a kind. So I always have that pride and I always have that, that, that love for my town, my hometown for sure. Yeah, I definitely share that with you, man. And I, you know, that's why I haven't moved too far away. I, I still, you know, I'm just in Bradford, so I'm only 45 minutes away. And I, I, I've lived in other places and I don't want to go anywhere else. This is, you know, your yeah. roots are here, you know, it's beautiful here. So I respect that 100%. Awesome. Hey, uh, this has been a fantastic conversation, Isaac. I really uh, have appreciated the chance to kind of catch up and see what you're doing. And uh, I, I think you've had some fantastic insights, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate the time, Josh. Appreciate talking to you. It's been a long time, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this uh, podcast uh, of yours goes. I think you're going to affect a lot of people in a positive way. So keep doing what you're doing. Awesome. You too, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. I absolutely loved having this conversation with Isaac Greeley. I loved hearing how his faith informs what he does, how his hard work on the mat in practice in training has allowed him to overcome obstacles in life. You know, we frequently, guys, we frequently give up when it gets hard. We let go. We stop doing the things that we need to do so that we can be tough enough, we can be strong enough to face the hardships that come into our lives. And I really believe that Isaac has given us a really good example to follow. Thank you, Isaac. We really appreciate the work that you do at the Matt Factory and really beyond. Thank you, man. Listen, if you appreciate the work that we're doing at Manlyhood, please, again, go to the store at our Manlyhood website, manlyhood.com slash store. Join the Facebook group, the Manlyhood Man Cave. You can interact with us there. And please, tell a friend about it. Like, comment, subscribe to this channel. I'm glad that you guys are interacting with us, that you're growing with us. I'm glad that we're spending time together. This is something really kind of cool, guys. Something that we are doing that is really establishing a movement. It's more than just a podcast, guys. We're establishing a movement. A movement where men are going to be better men, better husbands, better fathers, better leaders. And I'm glad that you're doing this with me. I love you. I care about you. And I'll see you next time. If you want to be a better man, check out our website, manlyhood.com, for blogs, videos, and more from our Manlyhood team. Men, you can also join our private Facebook group, Manlyhood Man Cave, where you can meet up with a band of brothers who will challenge you and help you on your journey of manhood. This episode is produced by Hatcher Media for Manlyhood.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you're listening to the show. Tune in again for more of the Manlyhood Mancast.